everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I've got a project I'm really excited to share with you. It is a concrete live edge river table with a no weld metal base. And today I'm gonna show you how to on modern builds. I started by using my circular saw and a straight edge to cut a three quarter inch piece of melamine into a two foot by four foot piece. Then I cut some two inch wide strips that I'll be making the walls for the form out of. This is going to be a limited tools project, so instead of cutting the pieces to length on the miter saw, I just used a speed square with my circular saw. I want to make this form reusable, so I'm using pocket hole screws, that way the walls of the form will be able to release really easily. This is the Craig K5 jig, and I'll leave it linked below. I'll also link a $20 pocket hole jig that works just as well, also from Craig. I used clamps to make sure the walls of the form didn't move while I was screwing everything into place. I started by installing the two long walls and then cut the shorter pieces to fit. Assembling a concrete form this way means that there will be no particle board touching the concrete. That way it releases easier and has a smoother finish. One other tip that helps the concrete release from the form is to apply a coat of paste wax. It just creates a layer of separation between the cured concrete and the melamine. It'll also help with the next step, which is applying a bead of silicone caulk around all of the corners of the form. Obviously, it doesn't matter what color the silicone caulk that you use is, you just want to make sure that it's 100% silicone. To round over all the silicone beads, I'm going to be using these tools. It's actually a cake fondant shaping tool, and it works perfect for creating a round over on the form. The radius created from this tool gets transferred to the concrete and really makes it look nice. It also creates my favorite step in the mold making process, which is removing all the excess caulk. I decided to use three foot sections of rebar to reinforce each side of the concrete. I'm using tie wire to bundle them into pairs, and I'm leaving the middle of the form without reinforcement. That way, whenever I go to break it later on, it hopefully splits right down the middle. Last week we found that making white concrete, or any concrete for that matter, is really simple and it only takes three basic ingredients. The best all around mix that I found is three parts aggregate, something like rocks or gravel, two parts sand, and one part cement. For my aggregate, I'm gonna be using white marble chips that I picked up from Home Depot. The marble chips that I'm using came from the landscaping section and there were some pretty big pieces. So as I filled up my cup, each time I would sift through and remove the biggest. Both the white sand and the white Portland cement that I'm using came from a local builder supply. I just called around to local suppliers until I found a place that had both white Portland and sand, then I went and picked it up. Before you add any water, you're going to want to mix up all of your dry ingredients. That way it's similar to when you buy a bag of Quikrete. Judging the right amount of water isn't the easiest thing to do, and you'll learn more as you go. You don't want to get a super wet mix because that's going to jeopardize the strength of it. And if your mix is too dry, then you're going to get too many air bubbles and it's not going to work its way into the corners of the form very well. My mixture was a little bit on the dry side and it was three parts aggregate, two parts sand, one part Portland cement, and about one part water. Once my form was a little over halfway full, I was able to insert my rebar pieces, once again, leaving the center unsupported. Today's video is made possible by Squarespace. Squarespace is the number one shop for you to build your own website. And the best part is, is you need zero website building experience. Squarespace's built-in designer templates look incredible right out of the box, and they're super easy to customize. All you need to be able to do is edit text blocks and upload and move around images to create your own custom site. Squarespace websites are designed to work great on desktop, but are also optimized for mobile, so visitors have a great experience no matter where they find you. And Squarespace is so confident in their service that if you follow the link down in the description, squarespace.com forward slash modern builds, you can build out your entire Squarespace site without entering any of your credit card info. Then, once it's time to sign up, just make sure and use the code modern builds at checkout for 10% off. Now back to the build. I let my form sit and dry for about three days. The slower you can let your concrete cure, the stronger it's eventually going to be. All right, so I'd be completely lying if I said I was not nervous, but 
You gotta go for it if you want something awesome to happen. So I'm gonna use this dead blow mallet to break this slab in half. Fingers crossed. Okay, here we go. Nothing yet. Well, that means the concrete's strong. Okay. Once I realized the dead blow mallet wasn't gonna get the job done, I wanted to see how strong the concrete was and whether it could support me. And it turns out it could with no problem. It wasn't until I jumped on the thing that it finally broke. Oh, it worked. I can see it a little bit now and it looks amazing. I almost don't even wanna show you guys. I just wanna build the base and then save it for the reveal. Are you gonna be mad if I do that? So not only am I doing a live edge concrete top for this table, I'm gonna be doing a no weld solid steel base. I'm using three quarter inch square tube with an eighth inch thick wall that I picked up from my local metal supermarkets. My favorite coffee table height is about 16 inches. It's tall enough that it's functional, but low enough that it still looks really cool. So I'm gonna be using my angle grinder with a cutoff disc to create four 14 inch long leg pieces that'll assemble a 16 inch tall coffee table. All the other pieces are measured and cut to fit based on the concrete and the spacing you want between your two live edge pieces. To attach all of my leg assemblies together, I'm using these corner brackets that I picked up at Home Depot. To adhere everything together, I'm gonna to be using a product called Gorilla Weld from one of my sponsors, Gorilla Glue. This is an epoxy adhesive designed specifically for attaching metal together, and I was curious whether it'd be strong enough for a metal base. So after applying masking tape to the face of each of my corner brackets, I could spring clamp them all together. I'm really excited about this project in general. The only power tools that I really used was a circular saw and a drill for the tabletop, and for the base, an angle grinder. Of course, you could weld this base a little bit quicker and a little bit easier than what I'm doing here, but I love the idea of coming up with a no weld solution for people that either don't have a welder or don't have the space or the resources. If you're a fan of my channel, then you've seen me weld plenty in the past and you know that I'm a huge fan. And I was happy to see that after this leg assembly had fallen off the table earlier, it all stayed intact, which means this thing is sturdy. Here, I'm adding some supports towards the middle of the base. That way the concrete just has a little bit more support. On one side, the concrete cracked relatively straight, and so I just applied a straight piece of steel across the base. The other support piece, though, needed to be cut at an angle because of that extra piece of concrete that fell off of it. I made sure that my concrete overhang each of these supports a couple of inches, that way if people really start looking at things, they don't see the support bar underneath. And to make sure that the brackets worked at this angle, I was able to just squeeze them closed a little bit or pull them open to match the right angle. I let everything cure overnight before I grabbed some Gator 120 grit sandpaper to do all of the rough shaping and sanding. The adhesive I used is totally able to be sanded once it's cured and it made for a really smooth shape. After sanding, I even came back with a little bit extra so that I could fill in any gaps or voids to clean everything up further. And to get into all of those hard to reach areas, I used this micro zip sanding block from Gator. It's awesome for detail sanding and because it's on a foam sponge, it's able to do contours and radiuses really well. Then I applied a coat of Rust-Oleum 2X primer to the base. This is gonna help the paint bond to the metal even better. The color I chose is called Blossom White, but the more important thing is that it has a satin finish, which means it's not glossy and shiny. This helps pieces photograph better because they don't catch light, and it's also gonna pair nicely with the matte concrete finish. 
So with that paint cured, the last thing I needed to do was put my concrete pieces in place. And man, I was so excited to finally see this thing come together. Check it out. So I think it's safe to say that we are at peak live edge tables at the moment. It seems like everybody nowadays is getting some live edge slabs, epoxy, and making a coffee or dining table. I think that's cool, but I just wanted to try out something new and I could not be more excited with how cool this looks. The marble chips were the perfect choice. And surprisingly, the metal base looks amazing as well. I was able to sand and clean everything up enough that those brackets really don't stand out much. And hey, if you're somebody that wants to weld up a metal base, I've got no problem with that. In fact, that's probably what I'm gonna do on my next project too. So this is something I feel like I have to do. I know people are gonna think that this base is not very strong, but I'm here to tell you, it is. I don't wanna mess up my concrete, that's why I'm using this plywood, but here we go. Strength test. So like always, thanks a ton for watching and I hope you learned something from this video. If you dug it, make sure and hit that thumbs up. That way it gets shared a little bit more often. If you're not already subscribed to Modern Builds, you can do that down below and make sure and hit that notification bell. That way you're updated whenever I post new videos. I really appreciate all the support and if you wanna keep up with me between videos, you can do that at Modern Builds on Instagram. Thanks again everybody and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye guys. Good news.